Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. I want to talk about hard drives today. And on some of our systems, we offer a higher performance hard drive option and wanted to talk about what that meant and talk about some real world performance uh, metrics. So um, we ran some common tasks like launching X-Plane, updating X-Plane, copying X-Plane, things like that to see what the real world difference is between them because um, just looking at them on paper, you would think that they would, you know, the faster hard drive would just revolutionize your computing performance, and we'll see that in just a moment. Briefly, just to talk about what, you know, the hard drives are and so forth, you know, this is the conventional hard drive that was used for many, many, many years. It's a mechanical hard drive. You still do find them in some machines, but they're going uh, by the wayside. They are dog slow, especially when you compare to an SSD. An SSD just makes your computer so much faster. The seek times on this are, you know, measured in, uh, you know, 10, 15 millisecond, whereas on uh, SSDs, they're sub one millisecond, and that's one thing that really makes a big difference. So, we don't even offer a mechanical hard drive on any of our systems, I don't believe, anymore. We've kind of gone away from that totally. Now, the next type of SSD that came out was the SATA SSD. It's the exact same form factor as a laptop hard drive, and so it's good, you know, because it fits in, it would fit into laptops and so forth. Um, but I don't like using these because they're messy in that it requires a SATA cable and a power cable, and there's just more cabling to run. And these are limited to about 550 megabytes per second because that's what the SATA uh, protocol interface, whatever you want to call it, is limited to, about 550 megabytes per second. So we don't use these anymore either. We used them for a while until the new form factor came out. So there's a new form factor called M.2, and that's what you see here. These hard drives are... Um, about the same size as a stick of gum. And the largest I've seen is two terabytes. There's probably some outlier out there that's more than that, but they range anywhere from, uh, I think as small as 32 gigs all the way up to two terabytes. Uh, the ones we offer are 500 gig, one terabyte, and two terabyte. And I love these because they just plug right into the motherboard. They sit right on top of the motherboard, and this is it. There's no wires to run, no cabling, very clean. So that kind of covers the, the form factor of these drives. Next, we'll talk about uh, performance of the drives. So let's talk about performance. You know, these look very similar but they are actually quite different. They're similar in that they fit into the same socket on the motherboard, obviously. They look very similar, but the ends of these are slightly different. You see there's two notches, or maybe you can't see, but there's two notches on this one, one notch on this one. And what those notches indicate is this is a SATA or SATA um, SSD, and this is what's known as an NVMe SSD. It's a new protocol. So as I mentioned earlier, this kind of SSD is SATA, but they also make SATA SSDs in this form factor. And as I mentioned earlier, SATA is limited to about 550 megabytes per second of throughput. Well, when you go to NVMe, I think the limit on NVMe is around 5,000, don't quote me on that, megabytes per second. So that's about 10 times the uh, performance, you know, theoretically. Um, so you might say, wow, um, why not go with this? Well, these cost about twice as much, maybe not quite twice as much, but getting there. Um, so you have to sort of evaluate the, the price performance thing. I personally would rather have a one terabyte SATA SSD than a 500 gig NVMe um, because those price out about the same. A 500 gig high performance NVMe is about the same as a one terabyte uh, SATA SSD because these SATA SSDs are still very, very fast, vastly faster than a mechanical hard drive. So for me, the value proposition is really um, with this one, the SATA and getting a larger size at this time, December of 2018. 
So um, that is what, these are the two drives we have going up against each other. So next we will talk about act, real, well, theoretical performance and then real world performance. So on these drives, uh, theoretical performance, um, you got a read speed on the NVMe of 3400 megabytes per second and a write speed of 2500 megabytes per second. And on the SATA drive, it's about 550 read and write. So that's about five to six times more or faster on the NVMe, five to six times. And um, what we're going to see is, does that really make your system five to six times faster? Um, just changing one component in your system usually doesn't equate to a one-to-one -one performance benefit. Now, uh, there's another performance metric, uh, can't talk, metric known as IOPS, or input output per second. And that's sort of the responsiveness of the drive. I'm not going to go into detail on that, but let's just say that's sort of the responsiveness, how quickly it can respond to a whole lot of little requests. Um, so on the NVMe, the high-speed one, we're talking 500,000 read IOPS and 450,000 write IOPS. Over here on the SATA, we're talking around 100,000. So about 500,000 here and 100,000 here on IOPS. Again, about five times. So five times the number of IOPS, five times the, the bandwidth or read and write speed. So then the question becomes, how much of a difference does it actually make in disk intensive tasks? Okay, so let's talk about some disk intensive tasks. Um, so one of the things we did, um, and I'll just go ahead and throw the, um, the, the chart up here, but one of the things we did is we duplicated X-Plane on the same drive. So let's just say you had a copy of X-Plane on your hard drive and you wanted to make a, another copy of it because, you know, just for backups or whatever. So we just simply copied and pasted within the same SSD um, a full X-Plane uh, world installation with no add-ons or anything, just vanilla X-Plane. And you can see that the uh, SATA drive took 10 minutes to do this duplication and the NVMe took about 6 minutes. So that's around 40% faster. That's a pretty good difference. Now it's not 5 times faster which you might have thought was going to happen because of the um, quoted specs. Now, um, to copy X-Plane from another SSD to the SSD in question uh, actually became a lot closer for whatever reason. And I think this has to do with the IOPS. When you're reading and writing from the same drive, the IOPS become more important. When you're reading from one drive and writing to another, um, you're freeing up half your IOPS. So in this particular case, the um, SATA SSD did it in 5.7 minutes, and then the NVMe took 5.55. It was almost a dead heat, I mean, within the margin of error. So then, basically, there's no difference there. Now, scanning for an X-Plane update. So we just went and we told X-Plane to scan all the files and see if they needed to be updated. The M.2 took, um, excuse me, the SATA SSD took 1.75 minutes, and the NVMe took 1.38 minutes. So a little bit of a difference there, a noticeable difference, uh, but not earth-shattering. The last thing is probably the most common task that you'd be performing. That's launching X-Plane. So this is this time is measured um, from the quick launch screen. And so we're looking at right about 30 seconds for the SATA drive and about 23 seconds for the M.2 drive. And so again, that's, that's sort of a noticeable difference, um, not earth shattering or anything. Um, so let's talk about next, what, what percentage faster um, are these drives really? So, you know, 500% is what, if you were going simply by specs, 
which you would you might would expect but there are other things that come into play there's ram speed processing speed and so forth and all that was re remained constant during these testing um, the only thing that changed were the drives so on I'll, I'll flash up or put up now the percentage faster so to duplicate x-plane on the same drive the NVMe drive was 41% faster. That, that's a pretty significant difference, but that's also a task you might do once or twice a year, typically. Um, most people don't do that all that often, and you know, it's a good thing to do if you decide you want to install the latest beta of X-Plane. That would be a time to duplicate your X-Plane folder in case things go wrong. Now to copy X-Plane from another SSD to this these SSDs there was only a 2.6 percent difference between the NVMe and the SATA so within the margin of error I'd say to scan for an X-Plane update it was about a 21 percent faster process on the NVMe but again scanning for updates is something you're gonna do you know once a month uh, something like that and then lastly, launching X-Plane was about 20% faster on the NVMe drive. And again, this is vanilla X-Plane, no plugins and all that stuff. So, um, roughly, you know, if I had to put a number on it, I would say that, you know, the NVMe SSD, when doing a disk-intensive task, could make it about 20% faster. Now, once you're up running X-Plane and you're flying around, it's not going to make any difference at all. The only thing this speeds up is disk-intensive tasks, which involve typically loading things, opening X-Plane, launching programs, scanning for updates, uh, booting windows would probably be about 20% faster, uh, things like that. So don't get me wrong, the SATA SSD is still very fast. Loading X-Plane in 29 seconds is remarkably fast. Um, it's just a little bit faster on the NVMe. So you're basically talking fast and faster. It's not like this is slow and fast. It's fast and faster. Um, so don't feel like if you go for the SATA SSD, the, the lower speed, the 500 meg per second SSD, that you're... you're kind of doing yourself in because as I mentioned earlier the better value proposition might be a larger SATA SSD rather than this a smaller for the same price NVMe SSD but if money's no object of course go for the NVMe SSD hopefully this helps you understand um, what you would actually be getting for that faster spec SSD